friends and welcome to House of David television production program today. We are excited for you to be with us today because I believe that today through this programming I will share with you something very powerful and important. Let's shout for joy today. Hallelujah. God is our victory. Amen. May the Lord answer you when you are in this grace. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you, protect you. Send you a help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he give you the desire of your heart and make your plan succeed. Blessings of the Lord that makes you weak and he adds no sorrows to you. The blessings of the Lord is on your breath, on your hands, on your seed. Hallelujah. On your sons and on your daughters. When you are victorious, you will shout for joy. Hallelujah. Amen. First of all, I'd like to share with you something from Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. You can open with me and read and uh, let us just look at this thing together. It says, He changes times and seasons. He removes kings 
and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. That's Daniel 2, 21. First of all, I'd like to share this with you about what this scripture is actually talking about concerning today, concerning it as the times that we live in today. Look at careful again. God changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. I believe as we live in this last days, I believe that God has a purpose for everything and God keeps the timing together all by his hands. And what he prophesied and spoke through Daniel the prophet centuries ago, I believe that they are happening today. I believe that today we are going to see these things what has been spoken by the prophet Daniel. And let me be clear. Let's look again into this verse and carefully examine it. God changes times. First of all, times can be changed. And as we can see that a lot of things has been changed in this world. So God is in control of times. God is in control of, of things. God is in control of everything. He changes times and seasons. And we're not talking about that God has changed 24-7. God didn't change the clock, and God didn't change the seasons. We still have summer, fall, winter, and spring. We still have those things. But God is speaking about through Daniel uh, the things that in God's calendars, in his calendar. And he changes times and seasons that we are living in today. Because God has his own seasons and timings for everything. Amen. And I believe that God has brought us to a time and a season that is so vitally important for the church to understand. And then he says, he moves kings and sets up kings. According to what? First, according to the changes of his times and seasons. Amen. According to the changes of his times and seasons. So when God is changing the time and season, in his calendar and moves to do something great. He also moves accordingly, uh, he says, kings and sets up kings. He moves one out, he moves one down, and he sets one up. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Well, the third part of that is, is God is going to give wisdom to the wise. And who are these wise people? I believe God is talking about the church right now. Us, the church. So God is giving us wisdom and making us wise and giving us knowledge to those who understand. And who are these people that understand? Those who know the word of God. And I'm talking to you about this today. I'm talking to you about these things today. And listen to me carefully. A lot of different people are listen, listening today on television and uh, on social media and everywhere else. But only those who have knowledge of the Bible and understanding, they will realize what's going on. And I'm talking to you about these things. And this is not a warning. This is something that God spoken to me about what he's going to do is a blessing. And that is going to be amazing. Watch this. As we moved on, let's move to Joel 2, 28, 30. And this particular verse, this particular powerful verse is uh, being actually taught and preached many times. And we know that even Peter on the day of Pentecost, he began to say to people that, well, these things, has, they, they happened, and uh, we, we are not drunk, as you may think, but this is what the prophet Joel said, and he quoted the scripture. Then after doing all these things, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. This has happened in the day of Pentecost, as Peter quoted the scriptures. This already has happened. 
I will pour out of my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your old men will dream dreams, and the young men will see visions. These things partially took place on the day of Pentecost. And this is why when Peter was preaching, he was saying, do not, do not marvel about these things. Do not be concerned about these things. It says, when we speak it in tongues, it's not because we're drunk. No, it says, because the Lord has poured out his spirit. And he says, in these last days. So at the time of the apostles, they were the beginning of these last days. But you see, that message continues. Verse 28, 29, and 30. And let's read this message together. Let's read what it says. After doing all these things, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And young men will see visions. And we stopped here. But let's continue reading this verse. Let's continue to study this verse. And this is what exactly God has put into my heart just a few days ago. This message that I'd like to share with you. And I'm telling you, when I hear God, I do hear God. So, the first part of this message was that God is going to pour out His Spirit, and He already did, in the day of Pentecost. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and so on. Your old men will see dreams, and young men will see visions. And let's continue. In those days, He says... In those days, I will pour out my spirit. So there's second time God speaks about that he is going to pour out his spirit. So the outpouring of his spirit, according to this verse, happens twice. First time on the day of Pentecost and second time as we see it now. God says, in those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. Well, here it is. First, God said, I will put out my spirit upon all people, which is Jews and Gentiles, and it happened in the day of Pentecost. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, it happened. Your old men will see visions, and young men will see dreams, and so on. It happened. And it continues to happen. And then the second part of this message that God says, and in those days, which days? I believe that our days, today, now. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, God says. Again, pour out my spirit. Even, not just young and old men and so on, and old people. Even on servants. And I want to stop here and explain what that means and what God has shown me. I believe this is very powerful. When God says, in those days I will pour out my spirit even on servants, what the Lord really spoken to me, and as we read in Daniel chapter 2, that God changes times and seasons and he removes kings and put kings in, and then he says he gives Wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have an understanding. It's to the church, I believe. It's happening here. In verse 30 of the book of Joel chapter 2. Let's combine this. Let's see this together. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. Again, God is changing times and seasons. God is changing again times and seasons. One season passed Another one is in today. What, is, what that season is, is that God is going to pour out His Spirit again. And what the Lord has spoken to me about is this. He says, in these last days, as we see that transition right now, God is going to pour His Spirit upon certain ministers and ministries, not all but certain ministers and ministries, and God is going to raise them up. And these ministries, not just uh, those that 
were there for a long time or were doing however and whatever they were doing. It's the ministry that paid the price. Ministries that they've been in hiding. Ministries that they've been tested in trials and uh, their faithfulness. And they're still doing the ministry. And they're still serving God. And they're still paying the price. It's ministers that God has raised in the wilderness. Look, he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. These are the ministries. And let me combine this again with the second chapter of the book of Joel. It says, in those days I will pour my spirit. I will pour out my spirit even on servants. And these are the people that God is calling the servants. That God has raised for a specific purpose. Amen. Men and women alike. Men and women alike. And I will cause wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. Something powerful is going to happen soon. And this is what the Lord has spoken to me about this verses and message. He says, as he already portrayed this in the scriptures, he's going to raise up ministers and ministries those who are really servants of God, those who know how to walk by the Spirit and pay the price, God will anoint them. Remember, second time of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to happen right now. And God will pour His Spirit upon the servants. So there is hope because God is going to move again. God is going to release His power over His church and over His servants and God is going to use them in mighty powerful way. And it's going to happen very soon. I believe it is going to happen very, very soon. And God says, and I will cause wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. So God is going to do something miraculous and powerful on this earth. Why? Because God prophesied and he said, it changes times and seasons. Now the time is come to be changed. Now that season has come to be changed. He removes kings and he sets up kings. The world thinks that he, they are running the world. They may think that way, but God is in control of every human being. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter how they do. It doesn't matter what they are. The Bible says he removes kings and he sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and understanding and knowledge of those who understand the church, his bride, his people, his children. Well, this is what the Lord has spoken to me a few days ago. He says, I am ready to pour out my spirit upon these servants on this world. We think that God is delaying. God will never delay. God will never delay His grace and glory and power. He will never delay in time because He is in charge of times and seasons. He is in charge. Well, soon we're going to be um, entering into our high holidays, as we call it. It's Hanukkah. It's going to be on the 19th of December, I believe. And Christmas is going to start as usual at the same time, on the same day. Something is going to shift and happen. Amen. God's calendar is very powerful. God's calendar rules the universe. It's according to his calendar that God moves. We are not in charge. My friends, we are not in charge. God is in charge all by himself he changes times and seasons he removes kings and sets up kings he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding we come into the end of this program and I want you to be encouraged I want you to see and understand that even in Joel in this so famous chapter 2 verse 28 to 30 there's two parts. In the time of the apostles, as they said, 
We're living in the last days. They said that was the beginning of their last days. Now we come into the end of this last days and God will pour his spirit over again. He will do it. Yes, and I want you to be encouraged, my friend, those who are of God's children. But those who are not yet, listen, you need to get a hold of our Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and be born again. Become God's child because soon God is going to come and fix all these issues and problems on this earth. On which side are you going to be? On God's side, on the side of Christ, the Messiah, or not? Here's the question. But you can accept him today. You can give your life to him today. Yes, you can honestly give your life to him today, right there, and he will accept you. You don't have to even wait in line. By the way, the Bible says that he stands at your heart, at the door of your heart and knocks like this. Can you hear it? Open the door to him and let him save your life. Amen. Because God is in control. That's his earth. Belongs to him. He has created and he is coming to fix it. And I hope you will be on his side. Amen. Well, friends, as we come into the end of this program, I'm sure you enjoyed it, but it's not about enjoyment. It's about getting to know what God is about to do. And the Lord said that he will do nothing except he will reveal this to his prophets. Thank God that he speaks to us. Thank God that he is talking to us through his prophetic word. Prophetic word. I will never consider myself a prophet. I will never say I'm a prophet. No. But when God speaks, I will deliver the message to you. So thank you so much for watching. I pray that we're all going to be ready. I pray that we'll be ready for the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Remember when God did this in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago? Was everybody ready? No. But those who were ready... They were cut to the heart and they were saved. God is coming to pour out his spirit for two things, for two reasons. First time he came just to save souls. But the second time he's coming to pour out his spirit. The same time he's going to, the same, t uh, for the second time he's going to pour out his spirit. He's going to not just save souls, but he's also going to judge the world. Judge. First time God didn't judge Romans. They did whatever they wanted to do. It was the plan of God. Second time, no. God says he removes kings and put the kings that he needs to cooperate with. Amen. This time, when God is going to pour out his spirit, he's going to judge. Save people and judge them. Judge the world. The world needs Jesus. And those who will not accept him, they will be judged according to the word of God. So I pray that you will be on God's side. I pray that you'll listen today and accept me into your life. Well, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for your support that we need every month. God bless you. Shalom to you. And until next time, may the Lord continue to pour his blessings, to pour his love upon you and give you great peace and victory. Amen. Until next time, we love you, and God loves you. Bye-bye. Lord of eternity, the mystery behind the veil. Lord God of heaven and earth, God of Israel. Come with your wisdom and power. Lord, hear the honor and strength. Lord, hear the cry of our heart. Come, a conquering King. And every eye will see your glory fill the sky. Adonai, 
Adonai, every knee will bow to the Lord Most High. Adonai, Adonai, you are Lord our God. Every tongue will cry, Adonai. Jerusalem way Praises lifted on high Hear the beautiful gates Long to see you arise When all of Zion sees Baruch Haba Adonai Adonai, every knee will bow to the Lord Most High. Adonai, Adonai, you are Lord of God. Every tongue will cry. Adonai, Adonai, every knee will bow to the Lord Most High. Adonai, Adonai. You are Lord and God, every tongue will cry, Adonai, Adonai. You are the Lord of all the earth, you are the Lord of all the earth. You are the Lord of all the earth, you are the Lord of all the earth. 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 Come on, sing. You are the Lord of all the earth. You are the Lord of all the earth. You are the Lord of all the earth. Every time you cry, Adonai, Adonai, every knee will bow to the Lord Most High, Adonai, Adonai, you are Lord, God, every time.